Hey everyone, I'm excited to share today about God's faithfulness and how he does not change. So I'm going to start off with the question that I want you to think how you would answer. And the question is, how do you know that God is faithful and how do you know that he's going to be faithful in the future? So think about that for a second and think about how you would answer that if someone asks you. Now, here's, here's some answers that I think are great answers. The first answer might be that God is faithful because he's been faithful in my past. He's worked in my life. Um, I've come to know Jesus as my Savior, and he saved me from sin. He's been present with me through trials. Um, and that personal testimony is a great answer. The second answer might be, um, I've seen God's faithfulness in other people's lives. A, a testimony again, like, Someone might share that they've been rescued from addiction, that they've come to know Jesus, um, that Jesus has been with them through trials. So that's another great answer, God's faithfulness in another person's life. Um, a third great answer might be that Jesus has been faithful in the Bible, and uh, that God has been faithful in the Bible. Um, he's worked in different lives in the Bible and different characters' lives, and he's been faithful and present and worked in their lives. He's been faithful throughout the biblical history as, uh, as the Bible records. So that's a third great answer. Um, but I want to give a little bit of foundation to that answer because just because he's been faithful in the past, why is he going to be faithful in the future? And that comes to that second part of what I said we're going to talk about and the fact that God does not change. So that God's immutability is the fancy word for the fact that God does not change. And immutability means that God does not change. He can't get any better or worse than he is. And there's three verses I want to look at today. Um, we're not going to get to look at the context too much, but um, they just share this uh, biblical truth and this theology of immutability. So the first one is Malachi 3.6. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. So here we see in God's word that he says he does not change. Everything that he says is true. His promises will not fail. So because God does not change, the descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Um, the second verse is James 1, 16 through 17. And it says, Do not be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So we see in this verse that every good and perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect thing in our life comes down from our Father, from God. And he does not change. So his faithfulness remains steadfast. The God who gives every good and perfect gift, as he says in James 1, 16 through 17, does not change. He's still the God who gives every good and perfect gift in life. So we can trust him to be there for us. We can trust him to provide for us. We can trust him to be faithful because he does not change. And Hebrews 13, 8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus does not change. God does not change. And uh, this gives us a foundation, again, just for God's faithfulness. Because since his character is the same and does not change, we can trust him. And think about this. God cannot get any better or worse than he is. And think especially about how God cannot get any better. God can't get any better, first of all, because he cannot change. But second of all, because he's the best that there is. There is nothing that could be better about his character. Perfect love is defined by God's love. There is no such thing as better love than God's love. He can't get any better at loving. Perfect justice is defined by God's justice. He is perfectly just. There is no way he could get any better at it. Perfect righteousness is God's righteousness. There is no way he could be better. Isn't that amazing? Like, every characteristic of God, he's perfect at. There's no way he could grow. He's just the perfect God, and he cannot 
grow to become any better than he is because he's the best. Isn't that amazing? Like, we serve a God who is perfect. Like, there's no way he could even get better because he's the best. And uh, we also believe that he can't get any worse. I mean, that's the only direction he could go if he could change, but he can't. Like, the only direction he could go is to get worse but he can't change. He promises us that he does not change. So we have a firm foundation to trust God's faithfulness and promises and character. God does not change, so we can trust that he's perfectly loving. We can trust that he's perfectly good. We can trust that he's the God who gives perfect good gifts. We can trust that he is just, perfectly just. We can trust that he's perfectly righteous. So I just think this is amazing. And in these times of just uncertainty and so much going on in the world, we have a God who we can look to, and he is our firm foundation for life. Jesus Christ is the one who we can build our lives on. We want to become like Jesus, and he is the faithful God who stays with us, who stays by our side, and is with us through every trial and storm. So let's trust in God's faithfulness in these times of uncertainty and look to him for all that we need, knowing that he is the God who keeps his promises. First of all, he is the God who keeps his promises. Think about this. We have salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We have the promise for those who believe of eternal life. So let's trust his faithfulness. Let's look to him for all that we need. And just remember this in prayer this week, that God, help me to know your faithfulness. Help me to know how good you are in my life. So thanks for listening, and let's just be thinking about God's faithfulness and his immutability this week. Thanks.